prayer. God, we thank you for this day, Lord, and for the, the blue skies after it was so smoky the last couple of days. We ask that your spirit would fill us, inspire us, make us aware of your presence, enable us to worship you. Lord, build up your people as we join together in worship. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And this is World Communion Sunday, which um, part of the emphasis on that is that the, that the church all over the world is, is one. And it doesn't really matter the, the name we've got on the wall, that we're, we're followers of Jesus Christ, and that is the, the main thing. So I invite you to stand and to sing, The Church's One Foundation is Jesus Christ her Lord. The church's one foundation is Jesus Christ her Lord. She is his new creation by water and the word. From them he came and sought her to be his holy bride. With his own blood he just um, that this is the worship service both for the Los Banos United Methodist Church and the, and the Dos Palos United Methodist Church um, all of whom will be watching online um, and um, and many of our congregation are also online and uh, I realized I'd failed to um, announce about our offering the last couple of weeks we have an offering box on the table over there where we can leave our offerings in person or or we can mail them into the church office, or we can give through the online giving app on your phone or on the church website. So thank you for your, your continued faithful support that way. And and also, we, if you didn't pick up an upper room and you'd like one, make, make sure to get one of those. We, um, we have them for the September-October issue. And as we said earlier, this is World Communion Sunday, and we're, we're emphasizing our, our unity with the Church of Jesus Christ all over the world, all kinds of different denominations, all kinds of different languages. And as part of that, we're going to, to read the next scripture language in, in a few languages. So I invite Yolanda to come and to lead us off with German. Nicht für dich allein, aber sondern auch für die, welche durch ihr Wort an mich glauben, bitte ich, dass alle eins seien, wie du, Vater, in mir bist und ich in dir, ja, dass auch sie in uns sein, damit die Welt glaubt, dass du mich gesandt hast. Thank you. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who believe, will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Christine's going to read in the Tagalog. Okay. 
nakikiusap ako hindi lamang para sa mga taong ito, kundi para rin sa mga sumasambal sumasambalataya sa akin sa pamamagitan ng kanilang salita, upang silang lahat ay maging isa tulad mo, Ama, na nasa akin at ako'y nasa iyo, na sila rin ay mapapasa atin upang ang sanlibutan ay maniwala na ako'y isinugo mo. No solo te pido por ellos, sino también por los que pongan su fe en mí, gracias a la palabra de ellos, para que todos ellos sean uno, tal como tú, Padre, estás en unión conmigo y yo estoy en unión contigo, que ellos también estén en unión con nosotros, así el mundo creerá que tú me enviaste. Thank you. Jesus has prayed for us that we may all be one, even as he and the Father are one. Let's stand to sing our next two songs. The first one is Firm Foundation. times through and so on the second and the third time maybe don't watch your words on your piece of paper so much uh, but rather look at each other and you can't see their mouths but you can you can look at their eyes and say I love you with the love of the Lord oh, I love you with the love Oh uh -huh. 
one another is by praying for one another. So as we come to our time of prayer, what joys or concerns would you like to lift up to, that we could lift up together in prayer? Okay. For Amanda's family. I'm going to lift up our, our daughter Amy, who had her birthday yesterday. We're celebrating that. And of course, lift up all those afflicted with, with COVID-19, including our president. Let's join together in praying. God, we thank you for your presence with us this day. Lord, you are a great and mighty God. And Lord, no matter what goes on, whatever troubles there may be on the earth, Lord, you still are there. You still are God. You're powerful and wise, and you hold us up and carry us through, and we give you thanks for that. We give you thanks that you loved us enough that you gave Jesus to be our Savior. He took upon himself the sins of the world. He came not to, as we read in our Bible studies this week, not, not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. And we thank you that that Jesus has borne the price for us and that we have forgiveness if we put our faith in him, if we confess our sins. You promise to forgive us and cleanse us, and so we do that now. We come to you admitting that, that we are sinners and that we have sinned and that we have made mistakes, sometimes on purpose, sometimes not on purpose, sometimes we didn't know any better, sometimes we couldn't have done anything else. We were like caught up into a larger system that we're just a part of. And Lord, we ask for your mercy and forgiveness. We trust in your promise of forgiveness. And Lord, we know it in our heads, Sometimes some of us don't feel it in our hearts that we are truly forgiven. And I ask that you would impress your forgiveness upon us, that we would know that, that you receive us as if we had never sinned because of the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And let us come to you with that bold confidence and let us be gracious in our forgiving of others because of the forgiveness we've received. Give you thanks this week for our daughter Amy, for the wonderful woman you've caused her to grow into. I'd ask for blessings for this upcoming year for her. Lord, we lift up all those that are afflicted with the, the illness of COVID-19, including our president and, and many of uh, the presidential staff, other leaders, people all over the, the nation, all over the world, afflicted with a disease. We ask for healing, we ask for a cure, we ask for a vaccine. And Lord, those that are afflicted economically because businesses are, are shut down or laying, laying people off, those that are affected in our in our mental health from not being able to get out and do the things from from isolation for those that that are not able to get out and come to things like this worship service because they're too and too vulnerable of a health condition to to be exposed to others even with all of our precautions lord teach us ways to to connect even over the phone just to, to lift up one another, bring to our minds those that are especially in need of a connection. And Lord, let us each one realize that, that we have that ability to be, to be ministers of your love, just with a phone call and, and saying hi to someone. We lift up all those that are affected by the fires. We, we thank you for our, our fire crews and, and ask for safety for them and effectiveness in their work. Or we ask for, for weather that will be conducive to, to stopping the, the spread of these very large fires. And Lord, for those that have lost their homes, Lord, we ask for your comfort and peace and provision. Lord, we thank you that our air is, is clear today, but we lift up all those affected by, by the smoke. Lord, we place our world in, in your care and ask for guidance and how how we can be good stewards of your creation. We lift up Amanda's family, among those that are affected by seasonal layoffs and, and ask for provision for them and peace and health for their family. 
and we lift up our nation as we as we're nearing an election that you would guide our decisions and our voting and that that whoever our leaders may be Lord they'll be inadequate for the job and will need your assistance we ask that you would help them to rise above trying to be right and trying to get the votes to trying to do what is right and to follow you and Lord we thank you that you have called us to be your people all over the world and so we thank you for those who who are remembering that on this World Communion Sunday all over the world who are praying for us we thank you for those who, who brought the gospel message to this land and to the lands of our ancestors for those who passed it on for those who who taught us personally and we give you thanks for for that message of salvation of Jesus Christ who is our firm foundation who is the one foundation upon which our whole church is united that we all stand at the foot of the cross and give thanks for what Christ has done for us. Lord, bind us together in invisible ways. We, Lord, we pray for our other churches in town, for all those churches that are trying to figure out how to worship, whether they should gather inside or outside or online or what's safe to do and what's not safe to do, how they can be in ministry. Lord, give us guidance and draw us closer to you. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hear this reading from God's Word from Acts chapter 11, beginning with <clears throat> verse 19, about the church in Antioch. We've got an Antioch in, in the state of California, almost certainly named after the biblical city, a popular town, popular name, and we'll hear why. <clears throat> so this is in the book of Acts after um, Peter has gone and the Holy Spirit's come, people are filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, Philip has witnessed to the Samaritans and the Ethiopian, Peter um, has gone to witness at, at the house of Cornelius, a Gentile, and, and the Holy Spirit came upon these non-Jews, Gentiles, in a way that surprised all the Jews. And then there was persecution that was attacking the church, so it picks up here. Now those who have been scattered by the persecution in connection with Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, telling the message only to Jews. Some of them, however, men of Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch and began to speak to Greeks also, telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand, Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. News of this reached the ears of the church of Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas, they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw the evidence of the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, also became called Paul later. And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. For a whole year Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. Thank you, God, for your word in Scripture. We ask that your spirit who inspired it would inspire this message that I bring now, that we could hear something we need from you. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, on this World Communion Sunday, we think about the, the unity that we have with, with the church every place. It's spread out everywhere, and, 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 we, and in our Methodist church, we're often... Um, remembering the the diversity that we have and celebrate that that we have especially in this state that is so diverse that we have people from many different languages and different ethnic and cultural groups here within our our conference and, and our state and and of course then across the whole world 
And we have those verses in Scripture where, where it says, people from every tribe and tongue will be gathered around the throne worshiping the Lord in the, in the book of Revelation. And, and we often put a lot of emphasis on this diversity. Look, we've got you know all these different colors, like the little children's song, red and yellow, black and white, they're precious in his sight. Um, but diversity itself is really an obstacle to unity because of our human nature. Our human nature is such that we are more comfortable with people that are like us. And we're a little uncomfortable with people that are not as much like us. And so we tend to associate with people that, that are like us, and we tend to kind of distance ourselves from people that are different than us. And, and, and when we separate, we notice the differences, and, and in fact, we're ignoring a lot of the things that we would have the same with those people. And we become suspicious sometimes once we separate or the people that we're separated from. And, and that's, that we, we make up negative stereotypes and, and the, that uncomfortable feeling we have can lead to a mistrust and that can lead to a fear and that can lead to hatred and that can lead to, to attacks, both, both verbal or political or, or physical even. And, and there's just too many examples that, that we could share all, all through history, all over the world, whether it's the whether in Rwanda, the, the Hutus and the Tutsi tribes massacring each other, or in, in Muslim countries, the, the Sunnis and the Shiites, or the, the Protestants and the Catholics in Ireland, or the racial tensions between those, whether they're black or white or brown, city versus rural, rich versus poor, Republican, Democratic. We have, we have these divisions, and, and we, we tend to separate ourselves by them. And even the choice of our friends, we, if we're just picking our friends, we usually pick ones that have sort of the same tastes, the same experiences, the same um, maybe economic level, same ethnicity, interest, age. We, we find something, oh, they have so much in common with that person. Oh, they even went to my same high school. Even when it's like, oh, you know, all these things are in common. We feel drawn to this person because they have things in common with us. And sometimes even when, when people are, are very similar, they still pick out the differences and, and separate on those. And so, um, so you've got, you know, like the, like the gangs and you've got the, the Northern gang and the Southern gang. And even though they're, they're both the same ethnic group, they're, they're fighting each other or, or, the, or in religion, the Protestants and the Catholics or, or liberals and conservatives or those that baptize babies and those that don't or those that think you got to dunk people all the way underwater and those that, that don't emphasize that, those that think speaking in tongues is a great thing to do, and those that, that don't, and those that think you have to do it, and those that think you shouldn't do it, um, the kind of music that we, that we use, how formal our language is, lots of things we'll, we'll pick on, on what's going to be different. And that's our natural tendency, to, to notice differences and to divide. But the problem with that is if you keep on doing that and say, nope, we're different there, you over there, oh, no, we're different there, is that you end up all by yourself, just, just one, I mean, because there's nobody just like you. Now that's going to get kind of lonely, just being all by yourself. And so, so you think, well, maybe, maybe I can associate with people that aren't exactly like me. You know, maybe I can, maybe I can tolerate just a little bit of difference. Um, and so we agree to, or, or we have to deny our, our unique individuality in order to fit in with a group and pretend that we're not different than others. But because we get lonely, we, we agree to tolerate people being different than us. But then every relationship is this kind of calculated thing like, I don't know, how different is that person? Can I put up with that? Will that bug me too much? Can, can we be friends? Um, is it worth it to, 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 for the discomfort I feel over their differences? But that calculated tolerance is not Christian unity. That's not what Jesus is praying for, that we would all be one. What is it that makes us one? Well, it's the, it's the power of the Holy Spirit fulfilling the command that we've been given in Romans 12, too, to do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, that you might know the will and act out the will of God. Don't be conformed to this world. Um, one version says, don't let the world squeeze you into its mold, but instead be molded into the shape of Jesus. The world, the human tendency is to let our differences separate us. Nope. You're that way, I don't like you then. That, that's, that's the worldly thing. Um, but when we accept Christ and our sins are forgiven and we receive the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome those sinful natural tendencies, we start becoming transformed into the character of Jesus, into God's character. 
And so we read in John 3, 16, that God so loved the world, the whole world, all the world, not just the world that looks and talks and sounds like me, that he gave Christ to be our Savior. And then in Acts 1, 8, as Jesus is, is about to return to heaven, he gives the, the command to the, to the disciples, says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea, which was the next regional area, and Samaria, and unto the ends of the earth. And it's kind of a concentric circle right where you are now, Jerusalem, and then Judea, which is really close by, includes Jerusalem, and the people there are going to be just about like you. And then Samaria, which is pretty close by, but the people are going to be kind of different. And you actually have some animosity against those people. And then the ends of the world where all the weirdos who don't even speak Hebrew and, or Aramaic and all the, you know, the people who are out there, the, the Gentiles and the people at the far edges, the end of the world that, that they can't relate to very well. He says, you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and unto the ends of the world. And so you see, that's kind of an outline for the whole book of Acts that you see Philip who goes and he witnesses to the Samaritans. And it kind of shocks the people. Like you, you talk to the Samaritans and said, hey, God said I had to, so I, I did. And, 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 and God showed up. And then he, God sent him out to talk to this guy on the chariot, this person from Ethiopia, a different race and a different nationality. And then Peter got sent to go witness to this centurion, this Roman soldier. And the Holy Spirit fell on him and his whole family. And they baptized him and said, well, I guess you don't have to be a Jew to be a Christian. But it was shocking to them. They had to... And then we read this story from Acts 11 where there was persecution. And they were all the, the Christians who had all had, you know, started out in Jerusalem where, they, where the Holy Spirit had come upon them and the, the church was there and they were all gathering and learning. And then they started, the Romans started persecuting them. Now, who knows what you do if you're cooking and you have, you're cooking with grease and then it catches on fire. You've got a grease fire in your pan. What should you do? Baking soda? Baking soda? Flour? Flour? I see you're covering it there. What should you not do? Water. Don't throw water on it. Yes, because if you throw water on it, it will expand and it will fling the burning grease, you know, to the far edges of the kitchen and scald you. You should also not, like, run out and throw it out the backyard in case you burn your dog or your kids or something like that or, or, or spill it on the way. But don't throw water on it. Persecution is a little bit like throwing water on a grease fire for the church. It's like the... the, the the Romans, you know, attack them. Let's stomp this thing out. And the Christians scattered. And wherever they landed, they kept talking about Jesus and leading people to Jesus. And so they, they went up to Antioch and they went to Cyprus and they went to Cyrene and all these other places. But they were only talking to the Jews. Even though they'd already heard the thing about Peter and Cornelius, they didn't, hadn't really stuck in their heads. They still felt comfortable talking to the Jews. But then some of the people that they talked to that became Christians out there in Cyprus and Cyrene, they were maybe a little more used to rubbing shoulders with, with different ethnic groups. in those, And so they went to Antioch, and not knowing any better, they started talking to the Greeks, the Gentiles, the non-Jews also. And they believed in Jesus. And, they, and so that church became the first mixed church that was significant number of Jews and Gentiles mixed together, being the church together. And it's the first place that the followers of Jesus were called Christians. Those that overcame that racial and cultural barriers be called the little Christs. That's what Christians means. So the Holy Spirit, when he plants Christ's love into our heart, it displaces that natural tendency that we have to, to, to hate and to fear differences. It, ta it displaces our natural tendency with a supernatural love, with a spiritually based love. And the Christians in Antioch lived up to that name of being little Christs, and they overcame those ethnic and cultural barriers. And it was a powerful church. They had prophets there. They, they, they received a message from God that there was going to be a famine. And so they organized this huge collection. They, they, they sent people traveling around to all these different churches to raise money for the church in Jerusalem that was going to be hard-pressed when the famine came. And they sent Paul and Barnabas around to collect it. And also they, they received, through prophecy, the instructions that you should send Paul and Barnabas out to share the word. And so we read about in the whole book of Acts, Paul going around on these missionary journeys. Well, it was the church at Antioch that 
was his sponsoring church that, that started him out and, and sent him out from the beginning. And, and Paul had this ministry, especially, his, he would go to the Jews first, but then a lot of times they wouldn't receive the message, and then he would preach to the Gentiles that were around, and, and they received it more gladly. And so he started planting churches that were mostly Gentiles around the world. Today is World Communion Sunday, and when we receive the the bread and the juice and the, and the little cups uh, the, that we have and the little little packets there, when we receive that by faith, then we're receiving Christ. When we take Jesus inside of us, we're receiving Christ's power and his character. We're becoming Christians, little Christs. And, and also for those that, um, that can't be here today, um, that are watching online or that they also can can receive Christ by faith. And, and even as we're sharing this communion, if, if they're not physically able to, to drink the juice and, and eat the wafer of bread with us, can also participate by faith. And that, that as, as we share that, we're doing that for on behalf of those who can't physically be here with us as well. Another aspect of communion is that, that common union. What we have in common is what's most important, that, that we are human beings made in the image of God, who are loved by God, who are washed in the blood of Christ as we have trusted in Christ. We're filled with the Holy Spirit and therefore we're part of God's family. And that and that's more important than whatever differences we have. We have lots of differences and the differences can be very interesting and, and, and so we need actually some of those differences. I need people who think differently than me to help me see my blind spots or come up with stuff that I wouldn't have thought of or um, have a different approach to things. And so we need that within the church. God even in the church gives people different talents and gifts. And we need those differences. But what we have in common is more important than the differences and especially the, the petty differences of style and taste or the more significant differences of race or age or education or finances. <clears throat> Sometimes when I'm counseling couples that are going to get married, I, I tell them about, you know, that they're marrying into a family. You know, like that, you know, she, she may, he may be the apple of your eye. She may be your peach, but you're getting the whole fruit salad with all, with all the nuts involved. The whole family, you know, you, you get, you marry into this whole family and you don't really get to pick who's in the extended family that you're born into or that you're married into. They just come with a package. You don't really get to pick who's in the body of Christ. Everybody that that loves Jesus, that puts their faith in Jesus, is part of our family. There might be some people that we would not have picked as our best friends because they're not very much like us. They have different ideas and different things, but they're part of the family. And and it just like when you get together for Thanksgiving, they're part of the family. You got to get along, you know. And so we we learn to love one another and, and appreciate that. So as you partake of this communion. And for those of you that aren't here physically, as you partake by faith, give thanks for, for God making us one, and then ask for help to be able to live like it, to treat one another like we really believe that we're one, both, both in our own congregations and with Christians in different churches in town and all over the world. Let us pray. God, we thank you that you have made us one that you are our firm foundation, that you are our one foundation. And Lord, let us, let us pay attention to what we're based on, the thing that, that we have in common, Lord, and help us to cherish our unity with one another. Lord, help us to take the steps to, to witness to our, our unity with, with other churches in town, Lord, that we enjoy working together on things like manna or Thanksgiving service together or Easter sunrise service or, or, or working together, praying together, going to each other's Bible studies. That's one of the nice things about the doing things online. It's easy to, to participate in, in things that, that maybe another church is offering because it's all, it's all from our computer screens anyway. Lord, help us to enjoy and to relish and give witness to our unity with, with churches of, with different ideas, churches that are mostly of different racial groups, or that, 
that we're all your people. Lord, help us to live like that. Lord, help us to be an influence and a healing influence in our world. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> going to celebrate communion now and so I invite you to find your your cup so let's pray God we give you thanks that you have made us one we and we thank you that we are that we are one in you and, and Jesus prayed this prayer that we would all be one and then he went to the Garden of Gethsemane and then he went to the cross he died and rose again and gave himself for us. He defeated death. He rose again as sent us his Holy Spirit and told us to go to all people with a message of your love. And Lord, we, our ancestors came from, from places that would have been pretty far down on the list for, the, for those in Jerusalem to, to talk to or to, to meet. And so we thank you that the message has reached even to us. We ask that you would remember as Jesus gathered together with his disciples on, on, on that holy holy Thursday and he, and he took the bread and he, he gave thanks to you and he blessed it and he said take and eat this is my body which is broken for you do this every time you do it in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks to you. And he says, this cup is now the new covenant, the new way of relating to God through my blood. My sacrifice will take away your sins that shed for you and for many, the forgiveness of sins for many. Take and drink and remember what I've done for you. And so, God, we ask that you would send your spirit that as we eat and drink this holy meal, that we would not just be eating a wafer and juice, Lord, that we would be experiencing all the benefits of Christ's death and resurrection, his sacrifice of his body and blood, his sacrifice that washes our sins away, that gives us new life, that makes us a part of the family. And today we're especially thankful that we're part of the family. And so we give you thanks for this great, big, huge, wonderful family that spans across the centuries, even that includes those already in heaven, that includes those who speak different languages, that goes around the world. Lord, we thank you for making us one with Christ and one with each other, and ask that you would help us to live like we're one with Christ and one with each other that you might be glorified and that your word may be spread. We ask it all in Christ's name. Amen. To take the bread and to receive, to give thanks. And likewise with the cup. Thank you, God, for your blessings. Nourish us in our hearts. Help us to live as your people. In Christ's name we pray it. Amen.
now may God send us forth overflowing with his love, filled with his power and sharing his grace now and forever. Amen.